For the League viewers out there, I only mean passives that you spend skill points on. Dota doesn't have innate passives. So that was a fucking lie. I'm so sorry. I failed you. I want to have some fun. I touched upon innate abilities in my Yumi vs. Io video, and now it's time to take a closer look at their designs in comparison between League of Legends and Dota 2. But first, let's define the topic. Innate abilities are skills or mechanics, both visible and invisible, active and passive, that are inherently given to your hero from level 1, without needing to skill them and without the option to put any skill points to level them further. So, things like Yumi's Parasite, Medusa's Mana Shield, and Elise's Spider Form don't count because, even though you can start with them pre-skilled, you can still put more points into them. Such abilities act like normal, not innate abilities, with just a free extra level given to you at the start. Okay, now that's covered, let's get going. Dota has always had innate passes for a few heroes throughout the ages. Some of the oldest examples include the infamous Silencer Stealing Your Intelligence. And my favorite invisible innate passive, Faceless Void being immune to Chronosphere. For a long time, innate abilities were exceptionally few and could be counted on one hand. Then, over time, things slowly changed. Invoker got his ultimate as an innate ability. Trained Protector's Nature's Guise was given to him as an innate. Earth Spirit could make Stone Remnants, and Monkey King could transform into random shit. And now, with 7.33 adding a couple more, Dota's list of innate abilities has never been greater. This is all in stark contrast to League of Legends. Innate abilities in League have always been part of every champion's kit, and most champions are designed with the innate playing a huge part in their gameplay. What's a Kali without getting bonus damage after leaving combat? Vagar without infinitely scaling ability power, or Scion minus his zombie form? Most champions have innate passives that are not merely a buff to their stats, but are instead transformative and gameplay-defining parts of their respective champion's kits. Many champions even have innate actives, such as Nico's transformations, Orin upgrading mythics, or Kindred designating targets. To compare innate abilities in League vs Dota is to compare the design philosophies of power for both games. Dota has heroes that can make a swarm of illusions, or control an RTS worth of summons at once. There's cheap items that grant camouflage or detection, stuns that last for what feels like forever, and bullshit interactions, like a lifestealer heals for hundreds per hit against Centaur and single digits versus a Medusa. When looking at what seems like spaghetti in Dota, it's easy to imagine the devs maintaining a sense of, why not, wouldn't that be cool, mentality in the game's design. And so, we come to the nearly dozen innate abilities given to Dota's heroes. At a glance, most of them have the rule of cool factor. Wouldn't it be cool if Treant could just be a tree in the forest, literally? How fun would it be if Ogre was incapable of gaining intelligence because, you know, he's just that stupid? Oh, imagine if Monkey King lets you play prop hunt because of his 72 transformations. Most of these heroes didn't really need their innate abilities, they would be just fine with their base kits alone. Even the few that might need them, like Alchemist and his Greed, or Invoker and his, uh, Invoke? Well, these are just basic abilities that were redesigned to become innate ones, and not ones made as innate from the start. Wouldn't it be cool, and why not, are at the core of how Dota's hero innate abilities came to be. I'd argue that only the Stone Remnant ability from Earth Spirit is a truly irreplaceable innate ability, and is by far the most League of Legends-like innate in all of Dota. It tracks and uses fuel charges needed to empower the rest of the kit. Speaking of League, to remove innate abilities from most of League's cast of champions is to invite a full redesign of the kit and identity of the champion in question. Annie is known for reliable stuns, yet the stun comes from her innate passive. Cassiopeia has high movement speed pre-boots, and that's from her innate passive. Jace is known for swapping between melee and ranged forms, and that's from his innate active, which replaces his ultimate. Peaceful Ivern. Double Life Zack. Kyle. 
combo obsessed Samira. All of these and more are examples in which the passive is as much the champion's identity as any other part of their kits. And while that sounds great, it has one major flaw seen across a select number of the innates. In some cases, the innate passive resembles a relocation of ability text rather than adding a layer of identity. Take Milo's passive. When Milo's abilities touch allies, his passive also boosts their damage. It would be a lot of text to add allies get a buff to each ability, so instead the text and the mechanic is moved over to his passive. Another example is Jace's innate passive. When he uses his stance swap, he gets a burst of movement speed. Why and how is that not text that is on the ability instead? Even if you argue that moving the text improves legibility and can tie power directly to the champion level, it should be obvious that such innate passives are not designed in the transformative way that most others function. If the passive only does something when conditions related to the active abilities are met, then is it a standalone passive, or just a way to make the base get easier to read at the cost of having a real passive? In contrast, Dota's innate abilities are usually, though not always, just bonus skills given to the hero not as a consequence of the rest of the kits, but as a standalone addition that gives them a little extra tool to play with. Ogre doesn't need to be a dumb brute, and for most of his existence he wasn't. And Faceless Void doesn't need to be immune to chronospheres from other players, but he is. And it is here, in the use of the rule of cool Dota design, that I want to briefly introduce the mechanical replacement for transformative innate abilities. Ripped straight out of Heroes of the Storm, may I introduce to you Dota's Talent Tree System. Instead of being given a cool innate ability that you're stuck with for the game, Dota offers up a choice of two talents to choose from, growing in power and impact with every few levels. Some of these are as simple as bonus stats of sorts, while others alter the mechanics of the hero kits to fit a preferred playstyle vastly increasing both the flexibility and replayability of Dota's heroes over what is possible in League. Take for example the support hero Silencer. His kit is made for slowing and silencing enemies, but if you want to, you can opt into the right-click DPS talents for a more brute force damage approach. We can also take a look at Sniper, a ranged marksman, except when he wants to put all of his talent points into buffing shrapnel to the point where he can blanket the screen and slows and damage and play from the support position. As a final example, let's take a look at Legion Commander, a notorious tank assassin. Or, if you spec into buffing Prestia attack, she can become one of the best combat healers in the game, able to remove stuns from all of her teammates at once on a basic ability. Sure, Talents aren't as complicated to use as our League's innate abilities, but they often give you mid-game flexibility that, for the strategic mind, can be very rewarding in terms of tactical expression. There are a few truly unique and impressive merits to League having their system of innate abilities, one that I believe belongs to League of Legends as part of the game's identity. Dota's trying some stuff out, but we'll need to wait and see what happens next. I personally do not want Dota to adapt widespread innate abilities because they complicate hero kits and the current iteration of Dota benefits from having a lot of relatively simple kits to understand since the item system in Dota is very complex. For a view on champion complexity, take a look at this other video. Though controversial for my inclusion of summoner spells, I think its points on base kit complexity cannot be overlooked. Speaking of summoner spells, that's quite the oversight, don't you think? For the definition of innate hero abilities I gave at the start, both summoner spells and the recall ability qualify as innates. Though, I'd argue, as I have before, that these increase the general complexity of every champion, but I don't think they add to the champion's identity in the same way that a standard innate ability does. And that's it, League's innate abilities and their relationship to champion identity, and Dota's innates following the rule of cool. I hope you liked this video, and be sure to check out my other comparison videos. Like, share, sub, and I'll see you around.